Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a one day build, almost a little like a fix up, a fixer upper. Uh, if you know me, and I like to assume that you do kind of know me, if you watch this channel regularly, I'm here to tell you that what you see is what you get. Uh, but if you know me, you know that I love suits of armor. I have, I think, almost a dozen in my collection. Yeah. Um, and I love suits of armor. It's taken me a lifetime to realize that I love suits of armor for the same reason that I love spacesuits and the same reason that I love excellent safety equipment. I am endlessly amazed and thrilled by the way human beings can self-evolve their own protection. Yeah. When I... I wore superhero costumes while making Mythbusters. Certainly wore superhero costumes during portions of Mythbusters just to bring some color and some joy to the, the footage. But whenever I needed a piece of safety gear, like a kayak vest or a, 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 a fire suit or something like that, um, I wouldn't leave it to production to rent me uh, or find me the right thing. I would do the research and I would purchase the best version that I could afford. Which, well, you know, back in those days was good. So I have a really amazing collection of safety equipment and I'm here to tell you, I feel more like a superhero in a set of firefighter turnout gear than in almost any other thing I I, I have. In fact, the yellow fireman's uh, firefighter's turnout coat that I wore through all of Mythbusters is still like one of my favorite pieces. But this is the longest intro imaginable for what I'm about to do today, which is I found myself a little knight. Let's see if I can bring him into the frame here. Oh, there he is. That's it. I found this beautiful little knight. Now, I can tell from his shoulder armor here that he is a jousting knight. He uh, holds the jousting lance in this hand, and this protects his shoulder from the blow of the jousting lance. But this is, uh, this is not just a statuette. This is actually a, a lighter. A lighter, yes! I love this. I love this. I was recently at a friend's house, and they have, if anything, this friend has twice as twisted a collection of weird crap than I do. Uh, and he has um, one of those electricity lighters that Jimmy Stewart uses in uh, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Popcorn! Doot, doot, doot. It's this, and it was, it, you weren't going to get a light every single time with this lighter, and he, he bought the same one. Um, turns out it's very expensive. You can find them on eBay, but they're like, yeah, they're, they're very share. Um, but I found this guy recently for just like 20 bucks on an auction site and I'm super happy with him, but I'm gonna be even happier in a little while because I am gonna fix him up. I'm gonna polish him. I've got some new flints. Yep, I've got some, did I hold that upside down? I've got some lighter fluid. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna start fixing this guy up and I think I'm just gonna do it right from this angle here. Hold on. Ooh, look at that. So uh, first up, there's a screw on his back and it's loose. So I'm just gonna pull that out. That's the first piece. I'll put that over here. I cleaned off my table. Ah, <laughs> like the Terminator. Oh, well, he's got a top half and a bottom half. This is all, wow. This is all, it looks like injection molded pot metal. I wanna get this guy off the base for polishing. Um, there should be, Oh, there it is. There should be a little depression. You can usually feel, yeah. All right, so I don't want to peel off this felt. I like it, but I'm going to cut out the felt where I need to here. So let's see here. I've got, yep, that's one foot. I may have to replace the felt on the bottom of this. That's certainly. Okay, so there's a nice flathead screw, and the other one shouldn't be too far away. Here it is. That sound of the X-Acto knife having lunch. <laughs> I'm not sure where this came from, but this little screwdriver showed up in my shop recently and I really kind of dig it. Wow, this has already been, this is, 
already been taken apart by somebody. Ooh, see that? This is not the first time this has been taken apart in its lifetime, which is weird because the felt covers the bottom. So it should be. However, what the hell with that? A little problem at the factory. All right, let's do the other one. There we go. That screw looks much better. Look how much they have. This is actually kind of neat. Check out how long these screws are. And go all the way into here. Now, there's also, yeah, so they go into these threaded holes here. So what they did was they injection molded this with a void here and a void here. That saves them weight on the, on the pot metal. But also having these go so far up and in is really structurally fabulous because the base is like clamped between the knees. And then you've got these steel pins, like you could drop this thing and you won't really damage it. Okay, so that's the base, put that over there. That's for cleaning. Now I wanna take apart some of this stuff, fuel. Now we'll pull out the fuel screw. screw. These look in good shape. All right, the fuel port screw came out just fine. Now we're taking out the flint. And this should actually release a little springy spring. Test the flint is all the way at the end of a tube. There we are. Oh, speaking of a long springy spring, there it is. Oh, nice. Okay. So oh, that is the spring. That's the. Thing, and that's the flint. Excellent. Now, can I get further into this? Is my question. Amazing. Okay. So, this part is sprung on, and that's pinned in. Hmm. All right. It doesn't look like. Yep. The spring's look in good shape. I can oil that up a little bit. Um, I thought that might be an access point, but it's not. I don't, I'm loath to, um, yeah. I'm loath to screw it up, Obvi. Obvi, he's a lovely, a lovely character. Okay, so how did the fuel, I mean, he's filled with cotton, right? How does that work? How did that happen? All right, yeah, I see that. I see how that works. All right. Well, let me get out some metal polish and see uh, see what I can do. I have a drawer full of some various metal polishes. I'm going to start with this one, and uh, I need a cloth. I like to brush my teeth with metal polish. Ha! <laughs> In fact, we do all brush our teeth with metal polish. Mm -hmm. Your uh, your toothpaste has a very small amount of um, <laughs> tooth to it. It has a it has a grit in it. It's meant for polishing your teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just gonna start to just gonna start to apply this and just give him a little bit of a bath. Yeah. First bath in 50 years. He's probably pretty grateful. I don't know how old this is. This this could have been made last year in Pakistan or China or somewhere on the Pacific Rim, who knows? But, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to lump in Pakistan. I know that it's not on the Pacific Rim. I apologize for that. I was just thinking about other manufacturing centers. Oh, I like that smell. That smell of metal polish is a good one. Give them a little shoe polish there. I, so I've been watching lots of those, uh, Dudes fixing stuff up videos. I'm starting to have an issue with that. That's not very nice. Let's take it over to the polishing wheel. What do you think? Ooh! Nice! Yeah! <laughs> Yeah! Damn! 
Look at that. That's lovely. Yeah, I'm really, I'm super pleased. However, oh yeah, let's do a before and an after. There's a before, sorry, there's a before and there's an after. Uh, I'm gonna clean this up with my, um, with some acetone. That's uh, what I believe I found dissolves the rouge that's stuck on there. Put that on there. Oh yeah, fix it off nice and handily. I like him. I like him. That is lovely. Look at that. Oh yeah. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot to do close-up B-roll of the before. This is something I'm learning as I go. I keep. <laughs> I keep forgetting to do this for any kind of restoration or fix-up video. Look, right respectable. I am not gonna mess with that at all. I'm literally just gonna, uh, yeah. I'm gonna use the base without any modification. Today, if you're wondering what I was listening to today, it was a generous helping of the Beatles. I came across a lovely article on Medium the other night about uh, 64 things to love about Paul McCartney. I, is it his birthday soon? Um, anyway, it was a, a delightful trip through Paul McCartney's insane output. He's done like four humans worth of output, uh, at least four humans. I don't know if there's a more prolific writer of hits in the world. Anyway, I've been listening to a bunch of Beatles and Paul McCartney today. Um, all right, let's see. I mean, I grew up on the Beatles, but I also, like, one of my very first record albums was McCartney, his first solo album from 1970, which has, um, yeah, it's got waterfalls on it and some other stuff. All right, time for the upper body, and I'm going to just keep on looking at this. I kind of want to take it apart, but I'm afraid to. Is there any clue back here? No, there really isn't. The latching mechanism works perfectly and there's nothing wrong with it, which is great. And the flint worked. The flint that was in there worked. It's just really old. So I'm just debating. I think I could just take this right onto the polishing wheel. need to get, he's doing great. Everything's going great. Latching mechanism still works. He's nice and shiny. He's ready for a cleanup, but uh, I still want to get in here. And I think I have a thinner polishing wheel than this one. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. Yeah. See, I have this. I think this may actually help me get all the way. Oh, no. Oh, 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 that might get me there. Okay. clean this bad boy up. By the way, it's always important to remember that the rouge does the polishing, not the wheel. I know I've been jamming it in there, but that's also because I'm sort of trying to remove some of the rouge, but it's the wax that does the polishing. Dude, he's beautiful. He's way prettier than I thought it would be. It's great. Let's get some. Yes. 
little Dremel polishing wheel. Much better. Bellissimo. All right. Now, let's see if we can't clean out some of this in here. All right, here's hoping that the wick actually works because I forgot. Well, I think it's time to put in a flint. There you go. Uh, God, it's been a long time since I've dressed up a lighter with a flint. Many, many years ago, I was a dummy and I smoked. Don't be like me. I quit about 20 years ago. And I quit about 14 years ago, actually. So flint, yep, it's that one. Okay, and that's the spring and the pipe, you know. Okay, let's just double check that that works. Yep, creates a nice big fat spark. Let's do a little more cleanup of this helmet. I am not going to light it up with the acetone all over it, I promise. Okay, uh, let's just investigate this wick for a second. Just cleaned up his face a little bit. Okay, doesn't look like I can pull that out. So I'm just gonna try and fill it. And soaking in. <sighs> oh, yeah. Okay, that really feels like I've reached a kind of a saturation. I'm gonna put the fuel cap back on again. It's actually handily labeled fuel and flint here on the bottom. And it says made in USA. Well, how about that? Before I try and light it, I am actually going to make sure I've removed all the lighter fluid so that it doesn't catch me on fire. And then uh, Joe set me on fire. Um, one of my grandfather's best friends was New Deal filmmaker Per Lorenz. Um, per Lorenz, if you took an early 20th century film class, you might have watched some of the films of the New Deal. Down the Susquehanna, down the Dust Bowl. My, per Lorenz made a bunch of the early Dust Bowl films for Roosevelt as part of the New Deal, helping people understand just what was going on. Uh, and I met Pear late in his life. My grandfather died when I was a little kid. I don't really remember him very much, my grandpa Joe. But uh, Pear was at this function in West Virginia in the late 80s, and he was telling us a story about him and my, grandfa my grandfather um, and the kind of trouble they would get into. And he started telling us the story about how uh, at this cocktail party they were at that Joe kept lighting Pear on fire. They kept on like lighting his jacket on fire and he kept on saying it like, well, and then uh, Joe set me on fire. We're trying to wrap our heads around what that must be like, like 
in the 20s. Have your best friend set you on fire at a party? That's, that's pretty extreme. Yeah. Um, he also told us this other great story that uh, uh, my grandfather was uh, trained as a pilot towards the end of World War I. He never saw action, but he trained in a Avro 504K and came back to the U.S. at the end of the war, flush with some pay. He and Pear found themselves on a bender in New York City. Now, I warn you, this is a great story, but it's very plausibly a bald-faced lie. Pear, Lorenz, and my grandpa Joe found themselves on a bender in New York City uh, as dawn was God, as dawn was arriving, as the sun was coming up over Washington Square Park. And this is like 1919. Yeah. And back then, the milk was still delivered in horse-drawn carriages. And because they had a bunch of dough, Pear and my grandfather bribed the milk truck driver five bucks, which was like a fortune. Uh, and they had a, a chariot race up Fifth Avenue in a pair of horse-drawn milk trucks. Probably didn't happen, but it's a great story. All right, let's see. No. Mechanics are just perfect on this. I'm just not getting action on that wickage. Oh, I can see. I can see that there's yeah, liquid. No, I definitely don't have liquid coming out. Okay. Sort of getting my X-Acto blade pried under there and it's making a little more wick available. Hey! Look at that! Put it out. Oh. There it is. Third try. Come on. What does it only work under the light? All right, let's see if I can't get a little more. What do I want to try and jam in there? A piece of piano wire, maybe? Let's see. All right, got a little piece of piano wire here. I'm going to pull off the fuel port and see if I can't get this in there. No, no, nothing in there. It's all. Yeah, it's not gonna move at all. So how do I, well, I think I can add some more lighter fluid. Maybe that will help. Yeah, we're definitely at the limit for lighter fluid. I'm gonna put that back on and tighten it up this time. That's it. Yeah, look at that. Look at him, he's so pretty. Yes. Ah, oh, yeah, it's lovely. Okay, stop bouncing. Stop bouncing. Oh, he's... <sighs> okay, so when I have it upside down, the, uh, the lighter fluid leaks a little bit, and it wets the flint, which makes the flint not want to catch. So I've got to watch that. I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to get a better screwdriver. You know what I need? I need a felting needle. Well, actually, just any needle. Hold on, let me get a T pen. Okay, we're getting spark every time, but I'm not getting a light. Sometimes you can help jumpstart the light just by putting a drop of, oop. Lighter fluid there. Yeah. Yeah, burn yourself off. That's it. Yeah, it's been a long time since you were lit up, isn't it? Oh, that's actually, I'm actually having a positive effect on that. Oop. There we go. Smells like, smells like an old Zippo. Yep. Come on. There you go. Do I just need to let you burn for a little while? 
Oh. Well, that work. Let's close you for a second, see if I can't engineer a little bit of help there. Is it that, uh... oh yeah, so it is. All right, uh, this needs to come in just a little bit because at some point in its life, it got a little split here, so. Oh, come, come, come now. Why art thou vexing me? Hey! Oh, my God. Oh, I got, I managed to actually get a little bit of purchase on the wick and bring it up. So, that should it. Oh, I didn't want to lose it in there, because what am I going to do if I lose it down in there? That's it. See, now we got 100%. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, I told you this was going to be a quick one. Did I tell you? I might not have told you, but I knew it. It's time to go home soon. Well, there you go. There is my one day build, and I'm very pleased I got him to reliably light. This is a lovely addition to my collection, and I think this is gonna go live at the house. Yeah, I know. Sometimes you just know. So I'm gonna uh, take it home now. Thank you guys for joining me for this little one day, uh, what is it? It's a one day restoration, one day build restoration. One day build colon restoration. There we go. That's what we could call it. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for joining me. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching that video. If there's a video equivalent of the Clean Plate Club, you're a member. Uh, if you want to support us, one of the best ways you can do it is going to our merch store and purchasing one of our beautiful new posters. This is my hand-drawn sketch of uh, my two toolboxes that I used when I was an active model maker at Industrial Light and Magic in the late 90s and the early aughts. There's also on the far left side of the poster a list of all of the tools I had in these toolboxes and I use them daily for almost a decade. Again, you can get your own version of this printed on a beautiful cardstock by following the links below.